Hello and welcome to this video on how to specify a second order factor model in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials related to structural equation modeling, multi level modeling, latent class analysis, and other multivariate techniques. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button in case you like this video. So, in this video, I want to show you the M Plus syntax for specifying a hierarchical or second order factor model. In this, on this slide here, you can see a path diagram for a model with um, four first order factors, um, um, CFA model or confirmatory factor model. And in a standard first order CFA model, we just have typically correlated factors. And so in a second order factor model, what we are doing is we are explaining the covariances of the first order factors by introducing a second order factor. So in this case, here with four first order factors, a second order factor model would look like this. So here the factor F5 accounts for the covariances of the four first order factors. And the idea is that here, so say the um, for first order factors F1 through F4 are unidimensional and that their uh, covariance can be explained by this F5 factor. Where does a model like this make sense? For example, when you have longitudinal data and you have a process of state variability where you want to find out how much of the covariance of the same factor over time is accounted for by a common trait, so to say, that explains the stability in the covariances across time. And you want to find out how much of the variance in the factors is trait variance versus situation-specific variance. That can be done with a model like this. In that case, then, that would be called a latent state trait model, where the factor F5 would be the trait factor, and the factors F1 through F4 would be state factors that contain both trait and state residual variance. And so then the factor F5 would capture the stable variance across time and the situation specific variance would be captured in the residuals zeta 1 through zeta 4 of those first order factors here. And so then you could decompose the variance of the factors F1 through F4 into trait variance that is variance explained by F5 and state residual variance, that is the variance explained by zeta 1 through zeta 4. And there are other applications too, where such a hierarchical factor model or second order factor model can make sense. Now I want to show you how this is specified in the M plus software. So let's go into M plus. So here you can see the input file for this example where we have uh, three observed variables or indicators for each factor. You can see um, Y11 through Y31 measure factor F1. So that could be, for example, three indicators of intelligence that are used at time point one. Or those could be indicators that pertain to a specific facet um, for a, a construct. And so those measure F1. And then we have y1, y1, 2 through y3, 2 as indicators f of the factor f2. So that could be the same indicators, for example, measured at time 2 and so on. And this would be time 3, this would be time 4 or uh, some other uh, facet, so say facet specific variables. And so this specifies our first order model, the first part of this syntax here in M+. Plus. And so if you stop there and if you only had um, those commands here for F1 through F4, then what M plus would do is it would give you a simple first order factor model where F1 through F4 are correlated by default. Now what makes this a second order factor model in M plus is the next command here, or the next statement that says F5 by F1 through F4. So this specifies that F1 through F4 are themselves indicators of a factor. And so then F5 becomes this uh, second order factor 
that is indicated by F1 through F4. What M plus will do is it'll automatically make sure that the model is identified in this case by fixing one loading per factor to one. And that is true for both the first order factors and the second order factor. And specifically, the first variable that is mentioned after the by statement in M plus always gets a fixed loading of one by default for identification. The other loadings for that factor then are freely estimated as the default. And so this loading would be fixed, this loading would be fixed, this one and this one. And then also for the second order factor, the loading of F1 is fixed to one by default. The others are freely estimated. Now notice that a second order factor model is only identified when you have at least three first order factors. With two first order factors, the second order factor would need to have both loadings fixed to one to be identified. And in that case, then the second order factor only accounts for that single covariance of two first order factors. In this case, the second order structure is over identified because we have four indicators. So therefore, this factor accounts for six covariances. And that is then an over identified model. When you have three first order factors, it's a just identified structure at the second order factor level, then it's no different um, from a model in terms of the fit, it's no different from a model where just the three first order factors are allowed to correlate. But with four factors, there are additional degrees of freedom that come from the second order factor structure. And then you can request sample statistics and the standardized solution specifically with the standardized factor loadings that might be of interest to you as well. So let's take a look and see what the results here look like for this model when we run this in M plus. You can see the input reading terminated normally. That is generally a good sign for an M plus input file. We have 300 cases here and we have our descriptive statistics with the means first and the covariances and then the correlations. You can see that the variables here, the indicators are all substantially correlated, highly correlated. So this could be an example, for example, where we're measuring intelligence across time with IQ tests. We're using the same three IQ tests on four measurement occasions, and we want to find out how stable is intelligence across time, how much of the variance is trait variance versus situation variance when people take these tests. And so this points to the fact here that this is rather stable, the fact that we see these very substantial correlations pretty much across the board within time and also across time. Let's take a look at the model fit. You can see the model estimation terminated normally, so there was not a Hayward case, not an improper solution or any kind of other um, estimation problem here. You can see the model fits very well, the chi-square value here is 51 with 50 degrees of freedom. We have a p-value of 0.4191. So that means the model is not rejected at the 0.05 level. The model fits very well. Now, why is this so here in this case? Um, it's actually because it's simulated data. So um, uh, typically uh, you wouldn't, you probably for a complex model like this, you, it's rare to find a chi-square that is that looks that good. But in this case, the data were generated according to this model in a Monte Carlo simulation study. And so this is the correct model because they were generated like that. So this means the model fits well and we can interpret the parameter estimates. You can see you get the unstandardized estimates first here, the unstandardized loadings. As I told you earlier, the first loading for each factor is always fixed to one for identification by default. The other loadings are estimated. Now, the unstandardized loadings are often maybe not so interesting, not so easy to interpret because the variables may come in different metrics. And here in this case, it is the case that they have very different variances. And so those are difficult to interpret. The third one looks small, but it's actually a substantial loading, as we will see from the standardized output later on. You also get the second order factor loadings 
below here. And again, you can see that the first loading of F1 on F5 is fixed to 1, again for identification, so that this factor F5 also has a metric and it's identified the other loadings are freely estimated on this factor. Let's take a look at the standardized output, which is a little easier here to interpret, and you can see that the first order loadings in the completely standardized solution STDYX are all very substantial. So you can see all those factor loadings are around 0.9 or higher. Some are slightly below 0.9, but so overall they're very strong. So that shows you that these indicators are very reliable indicators of the first order factors. And that's plausible for um, IQ tests, for example. We know that IQ tests often have very high reliability, so they should load highly onto these factors. And despite the fact that in the unstandardized solution some of the loadings looked small, you can see they're all substantial. And that's because they simply come in different metrics with different variances. And so from the unstandardized solution, you can't really tell how reliable they are. And then the second order factor loadings. Now, you can see here, they're also very substantial. And so those have, of course, a different meaning. Those are now the loadings of the first order factors on the second order factor. And if we're assuming that this is a longitudinal model where we have repeated observations of um, these IQ scores over time for the same tests, then our factor F5 would represent the stable component, so to say, of these um, of the true IQ score variance across time. So that would be our trade factor that accounts for the over time covariance of the first order factors. And so it would be a latent state trade model where F5 represents the trade. And so you can see the trade here, F5, accounts for a large portion of the variance in the first order factors. These are all very strong um, loadings on the second order factor. You can interpret them as correlations. So those indicate the correlations between, for example, F1 and F5, and this would be 0.944. So this factor would be very strongly correlated with F5 it would be a, a good measure, so to say, of this trade factor. And they all have similar loadings, similarly high, which shows that they're all um, strong trade measures, so to say. The explained variance is given at the bottom. When you go down to R squared, you get the R squared values for the observed variables of first order indicators first, and those can be interpreted as reliabilities. So those are the standardized first order factor loadings squared. And so those give you an estimate of reliability for each of the indicator variables. And below that, you find the latent variable R squared, which indicates the second order factor loadings squared. So those would be consistency values in this case. If this, is, if this were a longitudinal model with repeated measurements over time, then those would give you the consistency of the first order factors over time, meaning in this case, for example, 89.1% of the variance in the first factor F1 is accounted for by F5. So a large portion of the variance in this factor is accounted for by the trade factor, showing you that it's very consistent over time, and the other ones are similar. So the, most of the variance, almost 100% of that true score variance in the first order factors is consistent or stable variance across time um, in a latent state trade model. In other cases, when you have cross-sectional data, then these R-squared values still would give you, would indicate how much of the variance in the first order factors is accounted for by the second order factor. So the same would show you how consistent these first order factors are. I hope you found this video useful to learn a little bit more about M plus and how to specify a second order factor model in this program. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to hit the like button. Also check out the description for additional free resources and workshops. Leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see you next time.